Alrighty, I think that's all set. So, we are going to be playing uh, Tamir or Rug or Rug Promo Moon. My friend um, Andrew has been on this deck for quite some time. It's always been a fun pile that he has set aside for me to pl uh, borrow from him whenever I want to play another deck. And he has been on this deck for a good bit now. Uh, he switches between this and uh, Affinity. So I got the list from him so we can play that tonight. Um, it's got 21 lands. Um, and it's got what you would expect, some breeding pools. Uh, it runs a lot of basics because it does run the Blood Moon. So four breeding pools, a forest. Uh, it's got six islands, a Misty, a Mountain, two scalding, uh, four Scalding Tarns, two Steam Events, a Stomping, and a Wooded Foothills. Uh, we've got some draw effects with uh, Serum Visions uh, and then some interaction with Spell Snares, Flame Slash, two Spell Snares, one Slash, four Bolts. Uh, we've got three Leaks and four Snapcasters. One Harvest Pyre, and then we got four Golfs, Goifs, um, two Nimbles, and then we've got two Blood Moons, two Pulse, two Trackers, two Electrolyze, two Cryptics, two Hunt Masters. He absolutely loves Ral and uh, Nissa, so we got one of each of those. Um, over in the sideboard, we've got two Ceremonus Rejections, a Dispel and a Gate, two Surgicals, another Flame Slash. Um, two abrades, two angers, two natural states, and two engineer explosives. So it's a pretty fun pile. Um, does a good job of playing the controlly deck when it needs to, and then uh, turning the corner and being the aggressor really well. So without much further ado, let's jump into a league. And how's everybody doing tonight? You guys are doing well, making it through your week okay. Just woke up. Very reasonable. Very reasonable, Reese. Getting Chinese food. I really contemplated getting Chinese food uh, on the way home. Uh, I decided that I would rather just make some, uh, cook up some protein and then get some rice at my house instead of stopping for Chinese food. It was meh, and I kind of regret not getting the Chinese food, but pretty sure I kept my calorie count down by not getting it. Alrighty, so this hand is a hand we just gotta send back. We've got no lands, so not much we can do there. Uh, this hand's not bad. We've got a little bit of interaction, and we're gonna be able to give all of our colors no issue. Oh, I appreciate that. My favorite streamer. Oh man, you're too kind. I'm going to keep that spell snare. Usually it's uh, really good early on here. We're going to be able to draw it pretty quick. Oh yeah, first walk is amazing. Now if I don't have to, I'm not going to uh, crack this fetch just because I want to uh, draw that spell snare. But if uh, it doesn't seem like a deck that I would want to keep, I'm just going to go ahead and crack this and that way I can ship it out. And go from... That interaction, that way I can save myself some life, but... Yeah, if you haven't been to it, there is a new um, Chinese place right off of 28th Street in Byron Center called uh, Chopstick House. Uh, fantastic place. They have like lunch specials for like fried rice, whatever main course you want for like... Okay, looks like we're going against Dredge. Do I want Spell Snare against Dredge? I think so. Um, they got a couple two drops we want to hit, so let's let's go ahead and keep it. And we're just gonna pass this back to our opponent. Um, they should be doing the Shri Karma effect on their turn on the upkeep. Or no, right now, and then they'll do it again on their upkeep. Looks like they got an amalgam. They should do it again right now. 
right, they hit a loam and a conflag. And now they just hit a, uh, a cathartic and a gold rate thug. Um, do we want them to be able to discard with Faithless? I'm going to say no, because we don't want them to have any dredge effects going on. So I'm going to grab a steam vents here. That way we're open up to all of our colors. And we're just going to go ahead and leak this. Alright, we didn't hit another land. Um, so we kind of have to decide here if the spell snare is worth it or if we want to drop a threat. I think here I'd rather drop the threat because our goifs can be pretty large um, and most likely they'll be able to play a land and get things going. So I don't want to sit back and do nothing. trigger all their amalgams. Alright, we still haven't hit a land, unfortunately. So we're just going to pass it back. I don't want to... Do I want to swing here? If I swing, put him down to 12, he's going to hit us for 8. We lose that race pretty easily, so we're just going to pass. Another amalgam and another blood gas. This is looking rough. Block that amalgam. I'm trying to get their gas back and all their amalgams. It looks so good. And they're gonna hard cast stink wheat. Alrighty, so we had another land. So we can drop tracker or we can hold up electrolyze. What do you guys think is a better line here? I'm leaning towards the Electrolyze just because I'm able to take out. Um, the only thing I could really take out are the Blood Gas, which doesn't make me feel good about shooting them down. Um, I can save myself some life though, which might be needed here. And the extra draw is going to let me uh, possibly get into the other uh, land I'm going to need for this Cryptic. Um, Tireless Tracker could trade with a with an Amalgam, and that's pretty much it. So if we go with the Tracker and go Amalgam, Amalgam for the blocks, we'd be taking three, seven, eight, and then if not, we could shoot the gas. I don't really like shooting the Blood Gas, though, because then they're just going to be able to bring back their Amalgams anyway, so whatever we get rid of. Hmm. I do have Anger of the Gods in the side, not in the main. Either way, we're playing with this. Yeah, in the main here, I think this is going to be pretty rough. Yeah, I like a, I like Electrolyze too, Reese, so I think that's the line we're going to go. No, 
Uh, Farm probably just dredges back there. Uh, they have life of the loam in hand, so they're just going to be able to cast it, get two lands, and then, or crack the wood and get three lands, and then they could just um, kill us. So I'm pretty sure we're just dead. Yeah, because no matter how we block here, so if we shoot blood gas, blood gas just to uh, reduce the most amount of damage possible, then block the amalgam, we're still going to get hit for 7. And then that's going to put us down to 5, and then they should be able to just conflag us for the rest. But we will try it. that so the cards we want from the side are these surgicals for sure and we want to bring in the angers and I don't mind the negate at all I don't think we need the extra spot removal and we don't need to spell because almost all their stuff is gonna be that we care about it's gonna be sorcery speed here Something a little bit more interesting? This is interesting. What do you mean? This is great. Um, so I want to take out the Electrolyzes here. And they're kind of low impact on their creatures because the only thing that we can really take out is Blood Gas. And then Nisa and uh, Rouse is just a little too late for me that I would want to keep it. I think the other card we might take out would be... Blood Moon here. Oh, oh, I know. Definitely remember the gamer tag. I almost feel like taking out one Blood Moon because usually they can operate pretty well with just red mana, but they they're also pretty greedy on their mana base. I feel like we can swap out Harvest Pyre for Flame Slash though, because that. Seems like just a better removal spell for us. Let's actually go upgrade. And then. Hmm. So we I can't nimble a dredge effect because that's a replacement effect. And is there anything else that we'd want to hit from them? I guess we could hit a blood gas trigger or something, but that seems pretty narrow. Hello to you as well, Fawn. Let's take out one nimble. Let's go with that swap there. And Andrew, if you're there, you should definitely be letting me get some assistance in the chat here in case there's anything you would recommend. So these are hands that I absolutely hate, but blue players tell me all the time that they keep island serum visions and it just works out and i just have such a hard time believing that island serum vision just works out so am i supposed to keep this here chat like are you guys gonna be just excited for me to keep a land serum vision kind of hand because i have the um i have a threat here with goif anger is gonna let me clear the board um but i don't think i'm gonna be able to reasonably cast that cryptic at any point all right you serious? You... Oh my gosh, you guys you guys are nuts. I'm gonna keep it because you guys are telling me to keep this, but this is absolutely nuts to me. I 
I know if I if I hit like if I had like the ability to cast this anger on turn three, it's gonna be pretty nuts if I can just get my goif out there and then do that. Because I'm just gonna wipe their board. So I want them to actually dredge pretty well, bring everything back, and then just Reese, how are you going to tell me not to keep it now after everybody already said to keep it? Look at that. Land, land. No issue. And I hit an island. Well, these are ridiculous, and we were able to make it out. I felt like the odds of that happening were just insane. Well, thanks for joining us, Hunglo. We'll uh, catch you next time, man. Maybe we can uh, stream some League or something some point together. League of Legends, that is. Show you how rusty I am. They did discard a dredger and an amalgam. We're gonna we're gonna shock ourselves here and just drop this goif. Okay, so you would have dropped both stifle bird. Duly noted. I wasn't sure if it was worth keeping uh, off of it, but we'll we'll cut the other one after this game. Looks like they got both Narcomoebas. They're going to bring back their Amalgam here. They're going to Lightning Axe Argoyf rudely. And then... So in order to maximize our anger here, I feel like we're just going to play the Bolt and our uh, Scalding turn, and then Bolt on their turn, and then we can get a, um, a tap land so we don't have to hurt ourselves um, with the Steam Vents, and that way we can still cast the Anger and we can Cryptic as well if we need to, so I'm just going to ship it back over here. and an amalgam, which is great for us. We kind of want them just to load up the board as much as possible here. All right, so with us wanting to anger next turn, I'm just going to take the hit here because I don't want to bolt the amalgam sent it to the graveyard because they don't have another way. Um, they do have a blood gas, but I think we're going to be fine. We want them to just kind of load up the board. Team events here. Okay, so we could anger here, which will be great. Wipe the board, and then we can surgical away their blood gas, and they're only going to have one narcomoeba left in the deck, two amalgams, and zero blood gas. I think that seems like a pretty good plan. Hmm. 
think this camera is set up to where I am looking at things a little awkwardly. This should be better for you guys while I'm looking at the screen. And we're going to get rid of this blood gas. Alright, they've got two conflags, a creeping chill, golgory, and stinkweed in their hand. I'll leave you a quick picture of this. Actually. Let's increase the deck size too. That way we can snap a quick photo. Put that right there. And we're gonna hit that blood gas. Pass it over. Not leaving them with too much here. So we just got to get ourselves a reasonable threat, and I think we're going to be able to lock down the game. We do have to be afraid of a conflag killing us. here just in case we need to cast I don't want to cryptic so and they cast conflag so they've got conflag creeping gulgory stinkweed in hand and one of them faithless Got no treasures. Okay, and they're gonna they're gonna bin two treasures. Is their plan here? Do we want to hold this? I feel like we want to hold the cryptic. We're gonna want to counter a conflag when they finally go off with it. So I think it's too soon to fire off and take out that faithless. Even though that would stop them from. Being able to dredge eventually, they're going to hit those other faithless and get that other mana, so we can't really stop that from happening. It's inevitable, so let's just go after the, the actual threat of the confederate. And as always, if there's a deck you guys want to see get played, just let me know. I think we only have um, one deck technically set up for um, Sunday. So I had wanted to see uh, Four Color were. So we're going to play that. Um, if no one else gives a recommendation, we might be playing Blue Red Phoenix because that's a pretty awesome deck to see get played. All right, we're going to get chilled here, and we got a Narco Amoeba. So we're going to on the four. Like, if you want to see Electrodominus, I'm fine with it. You want to check out that, uh, that list that we played against? I think as crazy as it is, we're going to bolt this bird. I mean, that's not bird, but the Narco Amoeba. I can't really afford for it to just uh, tick away at us. Oh my 
gosh, they got creeping chillas. All right, we're going down to one. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna cast Life of the Long Hair. Bring back all their lands. I'm sure they probably have tapped land and then plan on killing us. Let the can flag next turn. And that scalding turn is not just completely dead to us. Oof, and we've got an uncastable surgical. Oh my gosh. Why is life so rough? Alright, so if they just play a LAN, <laughs> they can get flag for one. <laughs> We'd have to counter it. Oh. They're gonna thug. Okay. So we're gonna bolt that. <laughs> So we've got Pulse here. So next turn they're going to mill. They're going to get a Narco Mevo for sure. And then that'll trigger and get back their prized Amalgam. If we Pulse here, we could get back... We could get back a Tarn, crack both, and then that way we can do Cryptic next turn. As well as being able to Surgical. So that seems like our best. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Do you not like that line, Andrew? Pulse back Goyf? If I pulse back Goyf, I can't cast Cryptic, and I will die to their Conflag. Right? Surgical can flag. Okay. So you want me to pulse back Goyf, surgical can flag, and then I'm dealing with just the flyers and the um, amalgam that I can just block with Goyf or swing through it. Okay. in hand they've got a creeping chill uh, which could be bad for us because they're going to just hard cast that um, reasonably pretty soon here next turn if they wanted to yeah next turn if they wanted to so we got to keep an eye out for that um, then they got a stinkweed stopping copper line um, they don't have much left in their deck other than the amalgam and then the narco amoeba so and let's snap a quick picture of this as well. Okay. I'm not mad about this line. And it does shuffle up their narco meal as well so that we don't know if they're actually going to get it off this turn. It doesn't seem like they really have a way to get rid of Goyf now, other than casting the, um, the Stinkweed and making us block. Oh, they didn't hit the Narcomoeba. 
weird opponent. All right, so they build a shock here, cast Creeping Chill, put us down to two. Yep. They shouldn't. So they could get a trophy to kill our thing. So and they have cathartic, copper line, and stinkweed left in hand. Okay. So I don't think we can swing, and I think we're just gonna pass hold up cryptic. input from you Andrew and our lines here what we're shooting for obviously I'd love to get like a, another pulse or a snapcaster or a huntmaster here start getting some life gain back they hit another amalgam Now, I think we just take the one here, right? We're going to block the Amalgam, take the one from the Narco Amoeba, um, and then, if necessary, uh, this is match one, game two, and we lost, um, we lost game one. Yeah. For sure, if we hit snap, we win. Should we just bounce the Narco Amoeba to their hand and draw a card just so we get an, um, a little bit higher life and then we get an extra draw? Because the faster we can get to this, um, the faster we can get to the snap, the better. I don't know if fetching matters that much. <laughs> We've got plenty of mana. Alternatively, we could take the hit and then they should cast the imp and then we can, uh, we could counter the imp. Okay, uh, let's just take the hit. Yeah, I was thinking bounce the neck, but um, we'll bounce it this turn and draw. Stinkweed, yep. And another stinkweed. Mm hmm. can tap their team down on their turn. Mm. Tap their team down, draw a card. Alternatively, we could swing here with the Goyf and see if they'll block with one of the one twos, and then they'd have to dredge it back, um, putting us in a much 
closer position with them just decking out. Um, the cryptic tap draw isn't. <laughs> yeah, I think we might honestly try be trying to win off the mill here. Um, yeah, I think I'm not against this whole. Yeah, I think we swing and then see if they want to dredge it. Because we can keep ourselves alive for sure for with Cryptic for one more turn. And if they're willing to trade here, we'll be able to cast Nimble Obstructionist and block the other one too. They're going to take the hard. Okay, so I think we just pass here. And then we're going to most likely be just tapping down their team and drawing a card. And then see if that gets us there. We may end up having to... Um, I don't think they have a chill left in it. Yeah, they don't have a chill left in their deck. Alright, they did dredge with loam. Alright, let's tap down their team. We hit an abrade. That's not bad at all. So we're going to be able to uh, abrade one and then block the other. <laughs> and they did lose their uh, trophy as well. Um, so that's good for us because that means they have no possible way left to kill our goif. Um, so yeah, that's pretty sweet. Um, in the purpose of conserving our mana here, I think we're going to be abrading their creature at the end of their turn. And the thug we can just block. Alright, they're just loaming to loam. Okay. Unless they're gonna dredge. Ballsy. We had another land, so not cool. Okay, so we're just gonna play that. And we have to hold the goyf back to block the thug, and we're gonna be casting the nimble to block the stinkweed up. Now the big downside to blocking this thug is that they're gonna be putting a car a creature back on top of their deck, which isn't what we want. Because we're definitely going for this mill plan right now. Stinkweed back on top of their deck if they want. And then next turn cast it. So we have to find an answer here within two turns. No, really. Yeah, two turns. Oh, maybe they have another end. Alright, we need to find an answer this turn. Come on, deck. Give me a snap or a pulse. Come on. Snap or pulse. One time. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So we can buy some time with this. <laughs> uh, so we can pulse back the nimble gain some life so I think that's what we're gonna do um, we'll just do it on their turn because we're gonna low on time here oh man 
and we gotta put a clock on them. I already blocked since uh, someone else called it out that we should block. Alrighty, so we can't block here, so we're just gonna swing. Let's see if they wanna block us. There's not it. Oof. So close. It's gonna be it. Oh. Very close. We didn't manage to snag it though, so. Oh man. a snap earlier on would have been great i think we just won the game yeah i think we would have lost in time anyway unless we had a ridiculously aggressive hand We've got Serum into Blood Moon action with Anissa. Of course we're going to keep this. This is like the dream hand. <laughs> um, we're definitely going to want our uh, Wooded Foot Hills and Scalding Turns to get the red source and then the blue source from the turn here. Um, so then that way when we Blood Moon we have access to all of our mana. So I'm just going to uh, lead this off with... Serum. All right, awesome. We've got the forest as well, so we'll be having that. Um, so let's go. I do want to snag that bolt? I think so. Let's let's go top top. And we've got another island. So that's great. We're gonna have our mana with no problem. Get some land action going, and then get some Missa Valley over here. We're going against Burn. Alright, I think we're just going to go Wooded Foothills in order to find a non-painful red source, and then we can bolt that guide. Alright. 
Oh, I knew you would appreciate this hand. It has everything you want. Uh, Serum Vision and this. <laughs> oh, they got another guide. Okay. See if we can get some uh, free draws. Looks like we got a Serum Vision on top of our deck. As much as I would love to get that Serum Vision. There, we're gonna get rid of... here we got a steam vents so honestly i think one of the best lines we can do here is actually just dropping blood moon that's very true i could have responded to that and um, got another look to see if we can get another free card so good call um i think playing the blood moon here to shut off boros charm and lightning helix seems pretty good since tracker would just be trading and this cell would be coming in at three. It could find us some answers though. But in order to um, reduce potential damage, I, I definitely like the line of just dropping Blood Moon and turning off any potential Boros Charms or. So let's just go ahead with that. We're at least going down to nine on our turn. I mean, their turn here. We like it so much. We're getting another blood. To throw a tracker just to block. I'm going to try to get a clue. Right, very realistically dead because they've got four cards in hand. Maybe, maybe it's four Boros charms. Maybe maybe we just were so good at this. <laughs> oh look at that. We got enough islands for a crypt to come in. Yeah, we draw a pulse here, it's pretty pretty over, I would think. Um snap's not bad, kill another creature. Um We could Nissa here and plus, and then if we need to, we can still throw Snap out there to block. Um, thoughts on that line? That way we can kind of set ourselves up, and if we do have a, um, get ourselves closer to a Huntmaster or to a Pulse here. Yeah. Yep, we're good. Plus, see what we get. All right, we got Leak and Island. Um, I guess not bad. We'd be able to snap a Leak here. So let's throw the Island on the bottom and throw a Leak on top. And let's just throw uh, Island out and pass it over. Still need them to do nothing. That's a spike. That's not nothing. <laughs> uh, no good. No good. Okay. Uh, so I want to bring in negate, dispel. Don't think those are fast enough. Could bring in the abrates just to kill some more of their creatures. Um, 
I don't think hitting Eidolon's worth it for a natural state. We'd rather just use like a removal spell. Search is definitely not worth it. Um, let's see. Nimbles seem pretty slow to me. And so does Nissa and Rao. Because I'm not really looking to go in any kind of like late game against them. Um, maybe I want to bring in the Flame Slash here just to be able to hit another creature as well. Cryptic does seem bad. Um, maybe doing Bat Swap there, negate the spell, upgrade a braid as Flame Slash, and then taking out the two Nimbles and this uh, Ral and uh, Cryptic. You would also cut Pyre and Electromancer. I mean, Pyre and Electrolyzes. So you would keep in the Cryptics here and the, uh, the Nimbles, and then just do that cut for those cards. That doesn't seem bad either. Cryptic just seems really rough to cast in this game, because it's going to be a long time. Okay, well that's what we're doing. We're definitely bringing in um, the removal and the counters. Uh, should you also bring in the anger? You apply pressure with Nimble. Yeah, we can apply pressure with Nimble. Uh, I don't think it actually does, right? Like the, the or does it stop? Does it stop the counter from being removed, or does it? Uh, I don't know. Well, we'll keep it. We'll do that swap as your recommendation. All right, this hand does not have much going on with it, and I think we would just die. So we're going to go ahead and look at this. Okay. Same seems a little bit better. It's a little rough without uh, having the green source here, but we got a serum to find that green source, obviously. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. Let's go ahead and keep this. We've got another serum on top of the deck because we're just that good. Um, are, are we going to shock ourselves on turn one, though? I think we're definitely going to keep it. I think the question here is if, just if we want to shock ourselves on turn one. It seems like we're just giving them free a free spell, basically, if we do that. So I'm just going to put this in a play tonight, and uh, we're just going to pass this over. ahead and serum here and see what we can set up we still don't have a green source I'd love to get this goif out there to block everything but um, I think that's gonna be pretty rough I I feel like we're gonna send this goif away keep the bolt on top and then go island and then do this again What would you guys do here? Would you guys ship this away? We got no green sources, so it's uh, the more we can ship away, this can be the better for us. But the bolt's gonna be able to take out one of their creatures, which seems pretty relevant if we're take uh, getting rid of this goyf. Um, okay. I think we're good at just serum again. The best, you know, we, as close as we can to getting better setup so we can maximize our draws. Great, so we got a breeding pool and a snapcaster. That's pretty awesome. Because um, we're going to be able to. Let's put snap on top and then we'll put breeding pool on top. That way, if they do goblin guide us, we'll get a free draw here. And then let's just ship it back.
I didn't want to hold up Smell Snare uh, because they're going to try to just burn off as many spells as they can while they have that Swift Spirit. Thing. And that seems like what they're doing. So on our turn here, we can just bolt the Swift Spear, put the land into play tapped, and then just pass it back to our opponent and hold up the Smell Snare. snap here so this is just gonna be a pretty uh, great sequence of spells so we'll be able we, we definitely want to get snap in the graveyard so we can bring it back with pulse if we really need to we can pulse their land on top of their deck and then gain the six life I think we want to hold off on that right now though because they could just skull crack us in response so i think we're just going to wait on that and then just let it come back to us you know we'll just play this play tap and we'll just pass it back all right they've got an idol on and they are tapped out right now from being able to cast Skullcrack. So here I think would be a pretty opportune time to cast the Pulse to gain ourselves a lives. We can put a Scalding Tarn on top of their deck, and then that way we're not going to take the damage from it. And then next turn if needed we can Cryptic, and then see what we can get. So we're going to go ahead with that. That's fair. Snap Snare would have been nice. I, I guess I'm trying to be a little bit greedy because we get uh, we have the ability to Snap Pulse now um, to gain even more life. Because we can um, cycle away the Nimble if we wanted to, get another land, uh, more Cryptic here, and then we'll be able to Snap Pulse the Nimble Obstructions back to our hand and put ourselves even further ahead on life. Or if our opponent swings with Eidolon here, we'll be able to throw out Snap, target the Pulse, block, and then um, Pulse back our Snap. So that gives us even more life, which seems pretty sweet. And I think that's the line I'm going to go for here, unless you guys think that would be bad. Snap, target the Pulse, block the Eidolon. Uh, we go down to 14, and then we can attempt to Pulse, um, bring back are snap and gain the six life. They may have a skull crack for us, but um, that would put us down to 11. We know they have at least one dead card in hand. Okay.
searing blood. And then we'll take three. And then don't think there's anything we can do about that. A skewer now seems like as good a time as any to do this pulse here just so we can avoid any kind of shenanigans with I'm mistaken, they have one more um, Scalding Tarn in hand, because that's what we put on top of their deck. So I think they had the other Tarn originally, right? Yeah, Tarn 1, they played a Tarn. And then we put it on top, so they should still have one more Tarn here. Um, If they swing, which they're going to here, we can take the two. Try to cryptic it at the end of turn, and then next turn we can snap, cryptic, counter it, and. Oh. Oh, it puts it on their hand? Okay. They still should have the turn, right? Because we put it in their hand, then they just haven't played it yet. Unless I'm mistaken. I feel like the play here is just to take the two, right? Because if anything else we do, and I don't want to bounce it right now because they're just going to recast it. So we just take the two. Okay. So here I'm thinking, like I said, we should just bounce the Eidolon draw card. And next turn we can snap um, and counter it. That way we can try to avoid any additional damage from casting other spells we want to do. And then we can snap. here and we can do a spell snare. This seems pretty good for us right now. Yeah, I think we can just serum vision, drop goif, and then we can snap snare. We've got a negate. We don't need the tarn. But I will take that snap. And we can just drop this goif. Awesome, we are on the same page. Cool, there you can see. All right, so you wanna take out Alright, 
So you want to take out the moons from the and then put in the electrolyzes. That way we can still kill their creatures and get some extra draw from our three drop instead of just trying to hold them off of their one spells, which seems good with me. And let's run it like this. Can we just play like four Hunt Masters? I just want to cast Hunt Master all the time. Oh, look who shows up. So this hand seems a little risky because we got two four drops. If we hit la one land, we're going to be able to electrolyze into a possible another land. Um, and we're on the draw here. So this seems pretty reasonable. It is a little slow. I don't know. I, I don't disagree with you there. Is it slow enough to where we're okay keeping it? Okay. Just gonna play this breeding pool uh, this turn so we don't take any damage from the next turn then we can abrade next turn and I think the, our weakest card here is nimble because tracker can get bigger and nimble is really gonna be pretty corner cases that we would want to use it um, definitely think we can get up to that cryptic mana to get more use out of that then we will the nimble and the electrolyzes and they raise and the hot masters and land obviously you'd want to keep you want to dump the tracker instead okay play here is just mountain pass we can abrade the eidolon at instant speed on our turn i mean on their turn and then possibly next turn we're just going to be doing an electrolyze or just flame slashing to kill something else but i think that's i think that's what we're going to want to do I'm coming up. Take out that idle one. Okay. So, the 
if we want to set ourselves up to where we can cast Cryptic, we're going to need to uh, use this Wooded to get ourselves a blue source. Um, I don't I don't think the line of stifle burning the rift bolt prevents or sets us up as well as just going flame slash on the swift spear and then uh, serum visioning and then wood of foothills before or after the serum vision um, to try to be able to cast this hunt master or this cryptic yeah that's that's okay cool that's where I'm at as well um, so let's see what we get with the serum all right so we did get a land so that's really good we don't need this tarn um but i mean this yeah we don't need the tarn but i think we'll leave it on top just because we're gonna get a free draw with this guide so i think i'm gonna go bolt tarn it doesn't really matter because i think we're gonna be fetching with this um wooded foothills most likely um and then we'll be able to flame slash away the swift spear. So we'll play wooded here, pass it over. Seven with this guide swing. Swift spear. I'm okay with that because it's actually going to be clogging up the board a good bit. You just don't want them to do like a bolt right now. Alright, so they're doing another suspend. Grab a steam vents tapped. And we're just gonna play Hunt Master. If we play Hunt Master though, they're going to. They're just gonna most likely rift bolt the Hunt Master. We'd be at seven though. Um, alternatively, we can just go island. And tap down their team and as long as they don't get two burn spells we would be okay okay yeah we still die to a um a double burn spell though i think that's the only downside with that line is going to cryptic tap but we probably died to a double burn spell regardless don't we Ship it over to them. Okay, Eidolon. I'm actually okay with that. So we're gonna go Hunt Master here. Spell snare on top. We're 
we're definitely blocking this here. Do we want to block? Hmm. What are you guys' thoughts on the blocks here? So if we don't block the guide here, um, then they just need one burn spell and we're dead, which seems really realistic. So I think we have to block the guide and then on, uh, they'll most likely cast a burn spell and then on our turn we can go goyth and electrolyze the uh, swift sphere and then we'll be able to hold up um, that electrolyze and then hold up a spell snare yeah oh they're gonna sear him blood us Wow, rude opponent. I guess we're actually pretty happy they didn't save the Eidolon, because then they uh, we would have just been dead to anything. But now we can actually try to um, counter whatever they cast, and then we can electrolyze their one of their creatures. So we're a little fortunate on that. Yeah, they definitely should have pre combat on that because they would just go on. Um, I think we want to electrolyze first, just in case we get a pulse. We can electrolyze, take out the Swift Spear, drop the Goyf to block, and then we can hold up a Spell Snare, grabbing um, an island with the Tarn if necessary. Just got another goyf. So we're just going to cast that and then pass it to our opponent. Oh, uh, unfortunate. That is a three mana spell, and we only can counter a two mana spell. No good, no good. Oh. So anybody got a interesting happen through this week already? I know everybody's cars and just outside in general is just extremely frozen this week. Alright, I mean uh, today that is with that ice storm we got. Um, so we keep. I was told, you know, once again, Island uh, Serum is good enough, right? <laughs> we got pretty much a mall already with uh, what we're currently looking at with uh, two um, Hunt Masters. But if we hit another land here, we got a Leak Leak uh, Bolt, which is pretty sweet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Alright, so we got Breeding Pool, and we got Pulse and Scalding Tarn. Um... So why don't we put the Tarn back, then the Pulse. Next turn we'll play the Breeding Pool, and then, and then Tarn. No, it's not close. I was told. Serum Vision, Island, keep every time. <laughs> Boggles. 
Alright, I think we're just gonna shock ourselves here, that way we can keep up the leak. Pass it back to our opponent. Oh, we'll def... Well, actually, we can save our leak here, because we can just bolt their Spirit Dancer on our turn and then hold up leak again, so... That, that way we can get some good value out of our bolt here. We'll turn. Uh, we'll see if they're, we can be real uh, greedy here and they'll, they'll, res they'll cast their uh, spell on their core spirit dancer and then we can just react to it. It does work every time with this island serum vision. That's, that stuff is ridiculous. I don't know how that always works. Alright, they got Raincore. So we're actually pretty good with that. We're just going to grab a... We can grab a mountain here. Because we're going to be able to pulse back the Scalding Turn if necessary. I don't want to take any damage if I don't have to here. I'm just going to bolt the Spirit Dancer. Get rid of the that way. Get rid of this rain core. They're gonna rain core the spirit dancer. We actually gonna get rid of that as well. Ooh, we got a turn. Cool. So we can leak here. We can hold up leak or we can drop down the hunt master. Um, if we hold up leak, they're not going to be able to cast anything, which seems pretty sweet. And then next turn we hunt master. It might not be a bad plan to just play hunt master this turn because odds are they're not going to cast a. Well, I don't want to risk that. that that'd be pretty. Alright, what do you guys think? Do we just drop the Hunt Master here and then hold up uh, Leak and Pulse next turn if we need to? Or do we go ahead and just hold up the Leak again another turn and just get them off any other um, spells they, are, they could be, enchantments they could be casting? Hunt, go. I'm just gonna grab an island here. There's no need to cause ourselves unnecessary pain. I think the only way that we could punish it is if they one drop into a daybreak coronet, which would be pretty awful. Okay. I'll see you got opponent. I am totally okay with a bunch of one drops. All right, we got spell snare as well now. We just swing. We could drop another hunt master here. No, I feel like I'll be getting the, the flip here would be pretty sweet. Yeah. I don't think I want to cast anything, right? Oh, they're gonna path me. Alright, so we're just gonna leak that. Well, actually, do we care about the path? Because we have another Hunt Master, and I'd rather save the Mana League for, like, a Daybreak Coronet. I don't mind getting the extra land right now, honestly. And it doesn't seem like we're giving up that much to stop them, so... Yeah, I think I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take the land. Are you guys good with that? Yeah, 
he's gone. I think I'd rather play the Huntmaster next turn when I have uh, the ability to spell snare here. So I'm just gonna pass. Because the only way we really lose the game at this point is by them dropping a cornet. So I don't want to even give them the option for that to happen. Alright, so they got a rain core here. And I think we're good with just countering that as well. We don't have another land, so I think I'm just going to drop the Huntmaster, hold up the Spell Snare, we can swing with our team, by our team I mean the wolf. Hopefully they try to daybreak here and we need to snare it. Come on. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, you want to swing? You can swing. <laughs> Alright, we've got a pulse here and a tracker. We can just track her. Well, let's swing first, and we'll swing with the wolves. The wolves. I don't really want to throw Huntmaster into uh, enchantment just to die, I don't think. Maybe, I mean, they could just double block with the one drops too, so it doesn't seem worth it. I think we just want to drop the tracker here and then try to race them and end this prick as quick as we can. I think got a spirit dancer. Let's see if they want to cast an enchantment. If not, we're just going to bolt it. to pain ourselves and I would rather grab an untapped source just in case we crack this clue and get a, um, a cryptic. So. Let's swing with the tracker and with both wolves. wolves. I should have cracked the clue there. Uh, I know. I clicked past it too fast. Because we could have put them to one. Or crack both clues and win the game. So that was my mistake. Definitely could have won this last one. Alrighty. 
Let's see, hopefully I didn't punt the game by doing that. Let's crack a clue. Serum. We could still try to hit a mana wig. Oh, that's the crypt deck. Okay. So they're going to swing for five, put themselves back up to seven. We'll take the hit, and then we'll just tap their team down and kill them. So. Definitely left damage on the table, and it almost cost us the so Definitely my mistake there, guys. Luckily, Cryptic saves us. Okay. So I was almost really bad. Luckily, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, so those are the cards that I know just outright that I want to bring in. Um, what is your normal board plan here, Andrew? I can add the anger. That was the card that I figured might be up, up next just because we can wipe the board. Um, and it can hit still all the relevant things, uh, such as a core spirit dancer on top of that. So it seems really solid. So we have quite a few cards we got to cut here. Once again, even though I know you love them, but I feel like we're cutting the walkers. Pyre walkers and electrolytes. Okay. That puts us up to five cards. We're bringing in seven, so I need to cut two more. Nimble doesn't seem like a bad call. Um, Blood Moon doesn't seem bad either. Let's run it like this. So, I have another Steam Vents Serum Vision Hand. <laughs> um, not sure if this hand is good enough, though. We don't have any enchantment hate, we have no EEs. Uh, we've got a single flame slash, so we could take out a uh, core spirit dancer. Yeah, it seemed like if I was going to keep Moon, it's something that I'd only want to do on the play, um, if at all. So I'm glad we cut it. So what are we thinking? Good enough to keep? Hand does seem slow. Let's ship it. This seems better. It's a little bit more interaction, and we can definitely take advantage of that spell snare, so. I don't need another land, though. I don't know exactly what I'm searching for quite yet. It should be a red source of some sort, but just in case. Core 
Four Spirit Dancer seems like a pretty good leak target for us. leak or possibly even just throwing out the snap to uh, trade with the boggle. Right, they're gonna rain core. Are we okay with that? And we can just throw snap in front of it? Doesn't seem like the worst thing because I don't want to save our leaks for other things. But we would be giving up a snap. Uh, resolve it. Okay. Now that's something I think we got to get rid of. Because we're not going to be able to deal with that at a reasonable pace because they're going to be first striking all of our things down. It does mean we're not going to be able to snap, you know, obviously. So, I think we just grab steam vents here, and then we can leak that. Next turn, possibly hope to just snap block. Yeah. see a reason to shock ourselves because we could be just snap leak I mean snap snaring so let's just go ahead and pass this over opponent swinging so I'm pretty sure we're just gonna snap block and target that leak Let me target that snare, not the leak. Yeah, we're on a, a rug moon pile. It's uh, Andrew's brew. A special list. Boggle. Very well, maybe just another turn where we're gonna snap block. I feel like we may want to keep up the possibility of uh, the breeding pool here, just uh, shocking ourselves because in case we may want a mana leak, because um, they could play another ethereal armor. Uh, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. So yeah, I'm gonna shock myself and just pass it over. So they'll just swing right into it. So we'll just snap. Target the leak. And go to block. Go 
it's just gonna pass it back to us because we got one available. We've got the triple bolt. And really, that what that's what really matters. Just beating the mirror, knowing that you're the better player of the deck. Oh, very happy we got a core spirit answer. We can take that out. I want to get rid of it now because we only got one red source. Um, see if we can get another relevant spell here. Oh, unfortunately, we got to stop. Put that into play tapped because we're definitely going to be taking three on their turn at the very least here. I don't want to take any extra damage. Drop a goyf. Oh, you're gonna put it together in paper, that electro endless. Oh, so sad. Why would they path us? Oh man. Alright. Uh good chance we're dead here. Cast pretty much any enchantment and we're dead. And that'll do it. E, e here is great. Um, so we'll just kind of take up their board. If we can get another land, we'd be able to pulse and guarantee ourselves up to the cryptic. Goif doesn't seem terrible. So let's go ahead and keep this. This seems pretty good. All right, they're mulling down to six. And they're keeping. And I'm just gonna play the bridge here, tapped, and just pass it over. I don't really want to take any damage here, but I don't have to. Definitely get up to cryptic mana now. And next turn, if we need, we can go explosives. So I think right now we're just gonna. We're probably just gonna shock ourselves because the tarn can fetch us up a non painful source. Because I'm pretty sure we're gonna be eating one wipe in the board next turn. So. Yeah, let's let's just go ahead and shock ourselves here. And I know this goif is just a it's just an old one, but I'd rather just get it in play and then make them feel safe about dropping a bunch of spells on this glade cover, and then we can EE for one wipe the board and beat them up. They just went for one. We're good with the Spirit Dancer, honestly. I think we'll just go Tarn Pass. If they go to cast something on the Spirit Dancer, um, we'll give them an extra draw, but we'll take a card away from them as well. No. Hmm. Hmm. 
And alternatively, we just hold up, and then that way we can guarantee ourselves the ability to get cryptic. Taking out something like a... Well, giving them a draw does, makes it so it's kind of not worth it to just let them cast on the Spirit Dancer. But then they're just going to be casting on the, the Scout. Which I guess we're, we would be okay with because the EE on one would take care of that as long as it's not a totem armor. I think I'm just going to pass here and put the play into our opponent's hand. Yeah, EE next turn seems much better than right now. So I think we're just going to pass it over. We could swing, see if they block. And then we could crack a land and uh, bolt them. And then take out the Spirit Dancer that way, see if they're greedy. But holding it back kind of prevents much more damage. So I think we're just going to hold off. We've got another Spirit Dancer. If we bolt right now, we do prevent a double draw, which I think makes it worthwhile. We can pulse here into Serum after a swing, or just Serum and see what we get. I like, I like just Seruming here, and then see what we get. There's a lot of extra value we can get. We got another pulse. We got multiple goyfs. I think we're good with keeping one goyf and shipping the other one. And then we're just going to beat them up here. We're good with that. And then they got Daybreak. Okay. So they'll crack us for 5 here, go back up to 15, and then we're going to EE for 1. Yeah. EE for 1, we'll leave them with just a 1-1, one, one. and then we should be... And just a fantastic spot to win the game with it because they have no cards in hand. Oh, sorry about that. I thought I turned this down last time. I didn't have the um, the extra blue source to be able to cryptic bounce the Umbra. I, I only have three lands, Andrew. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they wouldn't have blocked anyway because their creature was only a 5-5 five, five, and our Goyf was a 5-6 so they would just literally be giving up both enchantments because they removed the totem armor and then it would take away their uh, Daybreak Coronet so they, they just would never make that block. Here I think we're just gonna drop the Goyf and then we're gonna swing and then um, we should pretty much just have the game now. Don't know what they could draw to stop us here. That's not a bad one. But that still does. Well, I guess they have one. Oh, they just can see. All right, snagged our first one. First match win. Time to keep it going. Upsetty. do I do it so you can pull up the deck list when you uh, do this or is it already doing that for you still getting used to the uh, trip, uh, twitch streams and whatnot and making sure I can provide everything for you guys the sand seems good we got serum vision and island this uh, blood moon tracker seems like a winner got a Nissa, a breeding pool, and a serum vision, so we're gonna go breeding pool serum. Alright, Temple of Malice means they are on Grishel brand. Hmm, Grishel brand. How do we beat that deck? <laughs> Leak's not a bad way to start beating that deck. All right, so we already got an island. Um, what if Foothills is going to have to grab us a green source here if we drop the Blood Moon? So another island doesn't seem bad. So let's put that on top and then put the leak on top. We'll drop Green Pool tapped, and we'll ship it over to them. That would be awesome if you wouldn't mind uh, stopping over some time to help me out with some of this setup be absolutely amazing more than happy to compensate you for your time all right blood moon doesn't seem that great here um and they've got a gristle brain in the graveyard so i think we have to hold up the mana leak at this point so i think we're just going to go wooded foothills and pass it over right now and grab that green source. I know we had that island on top, but, oh, still got it. We're great. We're great at this game. All right. I should have grabbed the red source. Oh, cool. That'd be sweet. Um, Uh, 
uh, was playing a bit faster, not paying attention. I should have grabbed the red source for our Ral here. I don't think uh, Blood Moon's any has any relevance this game. They already have a swamp and they have a, a mountain in play, and those becoming mountains are going to impact them. Got a nimble here, so I think we want to drop the tracker, play the island, get a clue, hold up leak, or do we start using Nissa to get our hands on more counters? Andrew, thoughts? Nissa, start start getting that uh, that scry value. Hit him with the moon into a stone rain. I think we've we've uh, ran Ponza twice already. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tracker it is. Are they gonna Gorios right now? Are these value borrowing just to get extra draw? Because they can't beat us at instant speed, right? Okay. confused like I know they can kill us if they were to Gorio's back um, the green red guy I guess but it seems so risky doing it right now Do they have enough lands? MTG. Okay, well they're gonna kill our stuff. Alrighty. It's possible we did it. They can, they can just Gorios possibly here and win the game if they have another land. But if they don't have another land, we can definitely leak. They already used the oh, they had a fourth simian. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! So, I know we want the spell, surgical, and negate. Uh, I think moons, slash, and pyre are my thoughts on what we cut. 
we got wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, they did such a good job of killing us. <laughs> What a tragedy. Uh, let's move this down just a tad. Cut rail slashing mode? Okay, that's fine with me. I'm indifferent to that. Okay, let's run it. You know, we haven't got a chance to cast Rail yet, and that's like a really sad thing. All right, let's see if we can uh, beat our opponent. Snare and Leak with the Serum on turn one. Oh my gosh, we're in. And we got a negate. Holy crap, we're in heaven. Um, I think we're going to go top, top, and then pass. I don't want to have to crack the tar in here because I have to leak, and I don't think I'll have to. But I do want that negate on top of the deck. Um, so I think I'm just going to shock in the steam vents here and then pass it over to our opponent. I'm faithless, that's fine. source here oh, so I'm gonna grab a breeding pool bolts so we're just gonna pass it back over to our opponent so thoughts on electrolyzing here just to get the extra card draw our opponent can definitely go off at instant speed, obviously, uh, since they showed us that last game. But it seems like an extra draw here seems pretty worthwhile because we may be able to drop a goif and then hold up leak or negate. Um, okay. Cool. Not a land, but you know, full deal. Um, I think we're just gonna pass and bin a hunt master here. Land is great. So we shock ourselves and then drop either a uh, that way we can hold up a leak or a negate. 
And then that way we can, we can start putting a clock on it. I think I like that plan the most out of our other options here. Because just sitting back and waiting is not going to be good um, for us. Just because the longer we wait, the more uh, pieces they're going to have in their hand to just go off. Ritual. Spliced. Okay. Oh, okay. So there are um, Cassingorios onto it. Now, so I think the counter here is more relevant than the counter. I mean, letting them go off here is more relevant, uh, less relevant than let, when they go off on their turn. Because if we stop this now, um, they're going to be able to draw twice, and then their Gorio, uh, the their Gristle's going to be gone. But if we counter this, they're just going to Gorios again on their turn, and then they'll definitely be able to go off. So unfortunately, I think we should let this go. Um, unless we want to make them dig and then bolt them. We could just uh, let this go off, let them dig twice, and then we bolt them in response, as long as they don't hit the other thing. I like that more because that way they don't ha at least they don't have a draw effect so we just give this to them now so we're gonna let this go off see something they could get but I think we're still fine with this We're fine with this. We can draw. Oh my gosh. So breach here, so we encounter the breach. They most likely have enough just to kill us with what's in their hand um, with lands. bad situation no matter what we do. So I think we're just going to counter this and they're most likely just killing us on their turn. Now they're just going to pack it. Okay. Which means they definitely have the ability to kill us right now. Good there. 
Yeah, I think we were pretty much screwed either way because if we did counter that, like I said, they would just Gorios on their turn and then do the exact same thing with a swing. So we were just screwed no matter what we did. Um, the only line we could have gone to possibly stop it was countering um, one of the uh, gain nourishing shoal effects, but that seems so loose. So this hand's got, if we're going against a creature deck, this is great. Um, but if we're not, this hand's a bit rough. Yeah, yeah. So the second time he cast the, uh, the shoal, then you would have countered it. So what do we think about this hand? If we're going against a good chunk of the meta here, this is a pretty decent hand. We're going to be able to just take out all their creatures, drop a moon, but we got to hit a third land to make ourselves get to the fourth land. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna keep this hand here. Ooh, not against Tron, okay. Definitely need to see that third land so we can drop this Blood Moon. And we need them not to get turn three Tron. Don't show me a Tron piece. All right, they grabbed a sphere. Should be good news for us. Yeah, Sanctum. All right, great, we got a land. So the hard part here is that we cast Blood Moon, we're not going to be able to cast the Hunt Master or the Pulse here with our current hand set up. Map, okay. Looks like they're passing it over to us. I almost feel like our best option right now is grabbing a, a stomping ground. And then we'll be able to potentially pulse if we need to. But most likely we're just dropping this blood moon, so might as well just grab this. And then we just. We won't be able to cast the pulses and the hunt masters though, but they're not going to be um, dropping anything really soon. them play it out one more turn because they're going to go fetch up another Tron piece and they don't have another Tron piece so they, they're on just a single Tron piece right now they're going to be fetching up the second one we let them fetch it up and then we Blood Moon because then they won't have the green source so that should slow them down as opposed to um, pulsing, I mean Blood Mooning now we're going to slow them down but we're not doing anything faster either
potentially here we may be able to do a a hunt master then dropping the blood moon would be ideal so that or we just fetch up an island right now drop the blood moon and hope to get a green source that is exactly you don't see a reason not to pulse yeah we're gonna be getting more lands but we're just not getting um, we'll be grabbing a tarn so we'll just be grabbing another island so I think I'm good with that maybe hope to get a get a source that can grab a screen because if we can grab a green we should be able to just win the game Island here, and then we will pulse the tarn. Hope to get a green source. Nope. Maybe we can get it off of our. Well. So I think we're gonna have to just um, blood moon this turn, and hopefully serum can get us there because we don't want to give them the ability to Sylvan Scrying into a... Sylvan Scrying into a um, Tron piece. If they do, I guess worst case scenario, they're only going to have five mana. So maybe we can hold off just one more turn, drop down the Huntmaster, and then make them search it up. What do you guys think? What is the far right land of theirs? The far right land? Yeah, they have a plant and a tower and a sanctum. The far right land is a uh, plant. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm thinking too, so I'm glad you're on board with it. Um, I also think we're gonna be doing it with the tarn here, uh, just so we can grab another island. Oh my gosh. I am so bad at this game. I am so bad at this game. Well, with plays like that, I think we have to Blood Moon. I know. I know. It's such a punt. Yeah. I hate my life. So, so bad. Alright, we'll go Leak Serum. And we'll go Blood Moon. I'm, I'm so disappointed with myself. I, I would, I would root for the other Tron player too. Alright, they did have the serum. I mean, the Sylvan's crying. Oh my gosh. I can't even call myself a magic player. Ugh. I think we're just gonna play Mountain and Pass. Hold up Cryptic here. Because they could be playing an O-Stone. Oh, wow. I'm so disappointed with myself. Your moon deck's just too complicated for me, Andrew. It's just too complicated. Ballista on two. We're okay with that. We're just going to bolt. Uh, well, probably just flame slash it. Hold up the bolt for like a card or something.
Yeah, we'll see him and look for the force. Don't think we need either of these. And I'm just gonna flame slash the ballista. We found the uh, the really powerful uh, force ability that's also a mountain. Snare. Another ballista? It is another ballista. Okay. Relic. Also okay. And the map. I think we're good with the map. And I think we're just going to bolt the ballista here. Do you like? I don't think, uh, sorry, I only, I only just saw the message now. So you like the counter bouncing your own, uh, the blood moon, uh, counter bouncing the spell to get blood moon. I'd rather do it on like a, a Karn or something. And then that way we can possibly be closer because if the turn we play Huntmaster, I'd like to be able to drop the blood moon back down as well to slow them down. Yeah, no, the, the turn we do it will definitely be uh, cracking the Misty and uh, grabbing a forest. Um, yeah, I guess I'd just rather wait an extra turn. Okay. So we do like that game plan. We just want to see if we can hold off one more. You know what? That doesn't sound like a bad plan. <laughs> the worst part is that play is immortalized now. Because I'm going to upload this video. And then every single time you guys want to give me crap, you're just going to pull up this video. Awesome. So we got an island. So we can definitely counter, bounce our own Blood Moon, grab a... Uh, making sure not to tap the Misty, if we need, don't need to, and then uh, crack it, and then we'll be able to drop Huntmaster, drop back down Blood Moon, and we'll be in a pretty decent spot.
get whatever value we can off of that. Do we let them resolve the O stone and when they go to crack the O stone we bounce the blood moon and draw a card? Okay. They're gonna do it on our turn though, so it's not like we're going to be able to get too much value out of it because I would expect them to just drop a land here and then um, wait till our turn and crack the Ostom at the end of our turn. So then when it goes back to their turn, they're still going to be able to um, get a lot of value out of that. Alternatively, we just uh, counter it right now, bounce our Blood Moon, drop Huntmaster and Tracker, and then hope they don't have another sweeper. For five, they probably, I mean, the only thing that you're gonna be casting is a, another O stone. They could most likely play another land and then they'd be able to drop a worm coil. Yeah, they have not played a land yet. That's why I kind of put this in an interesting spot, because if they just play a land, they're going to be able to blow up the Blood Moon, but they won't do that until the end of our turn. Um, counter it. Counter and bounce our Blood Moon, then, is what we're saying. I'm going to hold on the Misty here because I want to drop the Tracker first and then crack the Misty, get the... Yeah, because we can go Stomping Ground, Island, Island. Oh. I'm, I want to play Blood Moon, so I'm going to go Hunt Master Blood Moon. Breaker. Exile the Blood Moon. We can go. We can go Tracker into 
wooded and then hold up nimble for any planeswalker shenanigans they may have. Ulamog. We can nimble the Ulamog triggers. Grabbing another Ulamog. Nope, they got a worm coil. Still got a big old daddy to be a deal with. I'm just gonna take that. Tarn here. Do you want to be able to? I need to keep open six mana because I'll be able to pulse back the nimble to cycle away the Ulamog trigger, and then that way we just have to possibly deal with Worm Coil. So I think we're just going to draw here with Clue. trigger. Alright, I have one, five, six, seven. So I think that's it for us. We'll just pass it over. And then our opponent is going to take some damage here. to try to pulse back our nimble. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, they have an Ugin, again. That's gonna be game. Okay. So here, negate, ceremonious, ceremonious. I want to get rid of the flame slash, the harvest pyre, and an electrolyze. Um, natural states are relevant as well, so I'll cut another one of these. Andrew, you're still there. What do you think about this swap here? We'll be doing um, a Harvest Pyre, Flame Slash, two Electrolyzes, and a Nissa, and swapping it for a Negate, two Ceremonies, and a Natural State. hand is unfortunately just too slow and does not have enough going on and no serum vision so I don't think we can keep that similar problem with this hand we're not doing much and I don't think we're gonna be winning this hand does have a potential turn three blood moon which I think means it's probably good enough, even though we don't like it, because we can't cast the Pulse or the Goyf here. They're down to three cards, two cards. Oh, look at that, we got a Misty. We'll go Steam Vents, no, pass. Okay, that's fair. So I can, uh, I'll swap the Nissa for the uh, Huntmaster. And I think we're just going to grab a forest here. And we'll drop a Goyf. And we will turn for an island and swing. And we'll drop a blood moon. Snapcaster. Definitely use some serum visuals or bolts or something to speed up this clock.
Ag Tusk. You got another Goyf. I don't think the other Goyf is worth playing, but they're just going to beat us down with their Thrag. So I think we're still just going to pass, though. Oh man, our Molda 5 is going to lose to their Molda 3 at this rate. here see if they want to crack their O stone pretty soon here I think we're just gonna take this five Just claim our blood moon. I think we're fine with that. Because we can hold up Cryptic to have it counter whatever they're going to cast in response here. Because um, if we try to bounce it back to our hand, they're just going to pop O Stone. So then we don't get anything from that anyway. So, yeah, I think we have to let it go. Okay, so they're going to do that. I think our play is to just um, counterbalance the Sanctum, so that way they don't get anything from it. Just gonna grab a, a stompy ground here. We've got enough to snap and counter. We've got no cards left. They do have O stones. So I think we're just gonna swing. So it's going is fine. Just getting another mine. And we're just going to.
Um, if this keeps going back and forth, we're going to be fine because we can pulse to gain the extra life. So if they want to O stone here, we're also okay with it. Looks like they are. Um, so we're just going to pass, and then that way we can um, snap counter anything they have, and then drop Goyf next turn. Scavenging rounds, which is not great for us, but they'll be able to do it in response. So, why don't we just drop a quality threat for ourselves? We'll see them as well. Swinging something. What do you got for us, opponent? And then they're going to activate that, and then we will bolt the beast. Gets rid of everything. We'll be able to Definitely racing against the clock. Six. We cannot leak, snap, leak. Okay. I think, I think we're done for. There and then we'll pulse it back, gain some extra life, get our dude back. But I think we've, I think we're done here. That's a Karn that they can play through leak. Okay.
Yeah, I think this is over. I, I've, I've played this pretty poorly. So I do apologize. I don't think we can keep up with that, uh, what they have in hand and what they're going to be casting, so... I'm going to go ahead and concede here, but I apologize, guys. I, I, I played that pretty bad. So I'm going to ship this deck here, and we're going to swap over to uh, Skewer Spectacle Burn. Yeah, a lot of them were pretty close. You know, the one play where I didn't get to play the Huntmaster, I don't think it would have mattered because they did have the Ballista. Um, I think the just not being familiar with this deck definitely cost me some, you know, some points that were worth it, and it almost cost me some games too where I didn't uh, push the damage. So that was unfortunate, but you know that's why we play these games and uh, get better at the, these different decks. So. Definitely not a bad thing. More familiar with your deck now. I don't know what's taking the bots along. Seems like we're froze up. Okay, it seems to be good now. So everybody got big plans for the weekend. I'm going to close up the recording now.